Do you have student loan? Did you go to school because you love science? Did you take astronomy classes? Did you take enough math and engineering that you might get out of school and get a job as a rocket scientist? Now your degree should be renamed Bachelor in Worthlessness. You know why? Because there are no rockets that go into space and there are no stars trillions and billions of miles away and observatories are staring at the ceiling. That's a consequence in your mind. You see an observatory on top of a snow-capped mountain and you're like, what a bunch of idiots. They're not staring at nothing. They're not going to discover anything because that's the way it is. You see, your reality completely changes once you become aware of what creation actually is. So, I used to love science and I used to admire people that could baffle me with a chalkboard covered full of mathematical equations that meant nothing. Because I didn't get it. You know why I didn't get it? Because it didn't mean anything. So, don't waste your money going to school to be a rocket scientist. Don't waste your money going to school to be an astrophysicist. Because it's all stucco on the ceiling. There's nothing up there. We're not getting out of the dome because we live on a flat earth, a closed system. It was created that way. And this Copernican cosmology that convinced everybody based on an assumption that we're flying through space, orbiting a sun that's orbiting a cluster of galaxies, which is flying through space like birdshot, going nowhere, came from nowhere, Big Bang came from nothing. It's a joke. And it's a lie. And understanding this changes your reality. And that new reality is one of the consequences of understanding a flat earth. There was a time when I really looked up to astronauts. Any NASA employee that had the privilege of being on a shuttle or being in a space flight or going to the space station, these guys were the best of the best. They did the best in school. Most of them were, well, many of them were Air Force pilots. You know, they had uh, been groomed for this, this high performance job their entire lives. And, you know, there's always this little degree of, you know, jealousy and envy. How did a guy get so lucky to be able to do the coolest stuff in the world? Well, once you're aware of the fact that everything NASA puts out is fake, all their spacewalks are done in the buoyancy lab, and you can see lots of videos where there's air bubbles coming out of their suits, and there's water that leaks into their suits, and uh, all the satellites out there, and the space, you know, the space station imagery is all, you know, computer generated. So once you start seeing that, and every time they're in a video doing an interview, they're standing like this, because they're blocking the harness with the straps, that's holding them in place while they do these interviews which are on one of those uh, zero gravity planes that dive for two minutes at a time and they get the flotation. You got that idiot girl with the hairspray that looks all... Uh, it's absurd. And so now these people that I used to think were important, they're clowns. They're all clowns. They're space clowns. I saw the interview when they were talking to the astronauts who were in charge of the rover that landed on Mars, supposedly, right? Well, you'll see there's actually footage of that that Jaronism put out where they, the exact same photos, the exact same little rover in Greenland with NASA vehicles all over the place where they faked this thing. But when they were discussing the landing of the rover in an interview with a press release, you have the best astronaut scientist all in a row at a table. And you have people asking them questions. And their answers were, a child could have done better, you know. So, can you describe the landing, sir? Well, it was clean and, uh, hua, you know. Just, they acted like little kids, you know. And I got a friend who knows more about this and I owe him a milkshake or some idiotic response. Where in reality, when I was in school, I talked to the, uh, I was talking to one of my astronomy professors, and I asked him a, a technical question about something, you know. And he got so excited, he almost wet his pants doing the math on the board, and at the end of it, he's all, don't you get it, man? It's like negative three squared, and he lost his mind. This guy's the top astronaut, and the best answer that he can give you about the landing of the rover on Mars is, well, I can't tell you much, it was really clean.
Oh man. So now what used to be people that you held in high regard, now you're aware that the earth is flat, we live under a dome, space travel's impossible, NASA's a fraud, and these people are clowns. That's another consequence of coming to the reality of the nature of the creation that we live on. Here. Let's talk about another paradigm shift that is inevitable once you become aware of the fact that we don't live on a globe. We've all heard uh, news flashes about how NASA found another meteor that's coming in. It could have been the killer meteor, but they don't think it's going to hit us. We've heard, uh, you know, different maybe websites or, uh, you know, jabber about Planet X is on its way back or... Uh, Nibiru is on its way back. These are these things that they really don't know where they're at right now, but they're coming and they're on this wildly elliptic orbit. But we know it's there because of the math. Okay, well, these things suddenly are completely irrelevant once you get your head around the fact that we're living in a protected spot. If we live on the flat plane with a protective structure over it, ornamented with stars like a cathedral ceiling you also have to realize that there are no killer comets or meteors or planet X or Nibiru nothing that's going to come flying out of left field and surprise everybody like the movie Armageddon right because we live in a special place that was created for us that is not going to allow anything like that to happen. And so what you have is a complete paradigm shift. When people talk about it, it just goes right off. Why would you worry about the weather in a submarine? It's irrelevant at that point, right? So that's one of the, uh, that's one of the, the benefits of not still subscribing to this Copernican cosmology that says anything can happen and, you know, we're just lucky to be alive because the universe is a hostile place. Just another lie. Another deception, another distraction, and uh, this paradigm shift is one of the inevitable consequences of understanding that we don't live on a sphere, we're under a protective structure, and we live on a flat plane. It might be infinite. You realize that all the tools that we need to prove what we know is true are controlled by NASA. They have the keys to the magic room, and when they come out and shut the door, they tell you what's in there, and you have to believe them. They have the Hubble, they have the space shuttle, they control you know, who can fly, the FAA says who can go up and how high and when. We have no control over this. But when you became aware of the fact that the globe was a fraud, you became aware of that because somebody had shown you that they were frauds. What did they show you? You know, there's people that have done experiments with telescopes and levels and stuff to show you hey there's no curve there's people that showed you how there's the there were bubbles coming out of the spacesuits and and the, you know there's no dust on the landing gear on the official uh, uh, lunar lander images when they went to the moon and uh, all of the anomalies in the so-called proof that they gave us to convince us that what they're telling us is true well one of the consequences of becoming aware of this is everything is suspect now and we start fantasizing about ways to contribute to exposing the fraud and the liars. Everybody hates a liar, especially one that's duped the entire population, right? So, here's a tip for you. How about the International Space Station? They say they have a live feed. So all you have to do is go to NASA's website and then click on the ISS, look at their live feed, and then they show you, supposedly, the world as the space station is orbiting over it live. Do this. Watch it until you see a land mass you recognize. One day I was looking at that and I recognized Mexico. The whole peninsula there with a little bit of Baja, Cancun, the whole thing. It was very clear where it was. I know geography quite well. So I looked at that picture and went, hey, that's Mexico. It was pretty clear there was a couple clouds over Baja and it was a live feed. Okay? Well, check this out. Then you go to the live satellite, satellite images of the weather. And then you look at those in the same place. And what you're going to find is the weather's not the same. 
And then you have to go, well, which one's true? The space station's feed or the weather feed? Because what I saw was a clear blue day from the space station. And what I saw on the weather map was a storm over uh, Mexico. It was completely socked in. So I said, wait a minute. Let me get a third... Uh, a third witness here to chime in on this. I went to a webcam on the beach in Mexico and guess what? Pouring rain, socked in, no blue sky. There you go. Anybody can do that. Try it. If it doesn't say it's down for maintenance or whatever. So uh, there's ways that we can help expose the lies and, and one of the consequences of being aware that we've been lied to our whole lives is the fact that you start wanting to investigate yourself and you want to explore yourself. So be creative. When they say something, don't take anything at face value. Because if they can lie about something this big, there are no sacred cows. There's nothing that can be taken for granted. So be skeptical. Do your own thinking. Do your own research. And anytime you come up with a way to expose them, put it out. Share it. People are building on this because we don't have a class we can go to sign up for at the university that says, let me teach you the truth since everybody lied to you. That's not out there. We're on our own. And since we don't have the resources that they do, sometimes the best we can do is just show that they're pretty sloppy and what they're saying is a lie. So, one thing to keep in mind is that you're not really trying to teach somebody everything that you know about this subject. The best thing you, I think a person can do is to just open their mind and point out a couple things that will make them willing to sit down with you and watch a couple videos. Once they've seen a few good videos that comprehensively cover the subject, there's really not a whole lot left for you to say because they've already seen the material. But to get somebody to sit down and watch it seems to be the challenge with a topic like this. So. One of the things you do to not come across like a freak is remember that a good strategy goes a long ways. Think of a salesman who's trying to get an appointment to go to somebody, someone's house to, say, sell them a sunroom or a, a steel roof or a window remodel or something like that, right? So he only uses the phone as a tool to get the appointment with the customer. You don't try to sell them the roof over the phone. You don't try to sell them the windows over the phone or whatever your project happens to be that you're, you're contracting. You really only use the phone for one thing and that is to get an appointment. And then when you get in front of the person, that's when you do the selling, okay? So you have to remember that when you bring this subject up, there are so many people that have put together documentaries that really cover it so well. Why would you try to do that when you can simply get the people uh, primed to want to hear it? That's a huge obstacle. And I see people do a lot of the same things over and over uh, that want to talk about this. Some of the people that I know who are aware of it, which, you know, some of you may be lucky and have four or five friends who are really on board with this. And uh, it took me a while to get the first one. I'd share it with people and then go, yeah, well, you know, but the earth is round. Okay, dude, never mind. Because they don't want to hear it, right? I find that it's a tendency, though, when you have a new subject that you're enthusiastic about, to overwhelm people with information. The first thing you've got to remember, don't throw too much information at them. If you have somebody who is always cool with having casual discussion with you, and one day you say, man, I've been watching these documentaries, and i got to tell you something. Are you aware of the fact that... Have you ever been to the water? The horizon is totally flat. And did you know that when they say boats go over the edge, you can they really don't? They just go out of sight and you can look at them with binoculars and telescopes for as far as the, you know, the air quality will allow. And how about the fact that Antarctica is off limits and it's protected by the military and Pythagorean's math doesn't actually uh, proof out when you go out to the water and start trying to find the curve that they talk about. And did you know that everything that NASA does is fake and how about the the, what about the fact that you can see all the constellations all year, even though you're on different sides of the sun? They kind of look at you and go, whoa, whoa, hey man, it's cool, you know, uh, you might want to get your dosage checked. <laughs> and that person just put up a wall. Okay, so you don't want to do that to people because they always respond the same way. They back off and they're like, yeah, okay, uh, see you later. So, what you really need to do is remember, 
just get them willing to watch a video. Don't overwhelm them and don't make them feel stupid. You know, you really have to know something about the people you're talking to. If you're talking to somebody who already believes that the moon landing was a hoax, man, you're ahead of the game, right? They already aren't NASA worshippers. That's a great thing. But what if you're talking to somebody who isn't science-minded? He doesn't really understand even the, the official story, right? So when you're trying to contradict a story that he doesn't even understand, he's really going to be messed up. And, and with a guy like that, if he seems honestly interested in what you're saying, you definitely have to show him a video because it's full of illustrations and, and, and ways to, to show with videos and, and, and documentation what you're talking about, right? Um, so one of the ways you can avoid this is use images whenever you can. Then you don't have to explain. You know, if you have a phone or a tablet with you all the time, have that thing stacked in a folder full of good images. You've seen them all over like Flat Earth Matters and some of these, uh, uh, just look at, do an image search. You'll find all kinds of great stuff. Just save it and stick it in your phone. And then when someone talks about, oh, well, you know, this isn't true, go, well, you know, have you ever thought of this? And you show them a picture. If a picture's worth a thousand words, great. A, a, a video's worth a thousand pictures. So just keep it simple and, and just get them willing to watch a video. And preferably with you. Don't just send them one and say, hey, come on over, I'll buy you, I'll buy pizza. You can come on over and we'll hang out. I want to show you something. There's something that's going to blow your mind. And I'll feed you. Come on over. And people are usually willing to swing by and, you know, drink a six pack and have some pizza. Get them over there and then put a documentary on. And shut up and let them listen to it. And then watch their response. Because if they start asking a million questions after that, that means it cracked the shell. And they'll start peeking out and going, hey, wait a minute. And they're, now they're curious. And then there's 50 other videos probably. I Look, I have a good handful of videos on my proponents list on this channel right here. And you show anybody three of those, any three of those. And if they don't get it, there's nothing really else to say. Because... You're not going to explain it better than these videos do. And if they don't care and they go, oh, yeah, whatever, and then they turn football on, well, let them go back in the Matrix. That's where they belong. But it's really worthwhile to, uh, it's, it's rewarding to share this with somebody and have them call you and say, okay, I, I got a friend. I'll give you a personal testimony. I had a friend over, he lives over on the West Coast. I'm over here on the East Coast, but we worked together like 15 years ago. And uh, we've shared little conspiracy stuff off and on, talking about this or that, Bilderberg, 9-11, whatever. When I got into this, I showed it to, uh, to him. I tried to. I said, watch this video. He wouldn't touch it. And then I sent him another one. Watch this video. Did you ever watch that? No, I haven't had time. And you know, one day I got him to commit to watch one of them. Then he started calling me with a bunch of questions, and I sent him other links and other videos. Then he started sending me videos, and then he started sending me... Pretty soon, he's calling me going, Oh, man, dude, what'd you do to me? My whole world melted down. This is like everything else is nothing compared to this. All these other conspiracies just... Man, dude, I can't believe this. And everyone thinks I'm crazy now. I talk to my mom and my brothers, and they're all telling me I'm a fool. But he has someone to talk to. And if you can get somebody to watch a few videos and get it and then get catch... See, an education is not like filling a bucket. It's like starting a fire. And once you get people to see it, it'll take on a life of its own and you'll see them and maybe they'll end up finding something you've never seen and share it with you. But people are never going to basically come on board to this reality if they don't allow themselves to be informed. And so the real art in this, because of the subject and the depth of the indoctrination, is just get them interested enough that you can sit down with them and watch a video and then watch them try to digest it. And if they say no, fine. But you'll avoid a lot of headaches if you don't overwhelm them, you don't make them feel stupid, and don't try to teach them everything. You're not trying to to, you know, uh, be the encyclopedia. Just, just, I'm not sure. Don't, don't act like you know it all. Just show them a video. 
And if they ask you a question that you don't really want to get into because it's like kind of heavy, you say, you know, I, I'd try to explain that, but I think I'd mess it up. Let me show you something. And then you lead them to a video. So that's my advice on trying to get people to wake up and be receptive to this. And uh, I hope it works. And if you ever have a, an excellent experience, uh, you know, you should talk about it. Put it out there. Because you know what? It's encouraging to hear uh, somebody talk about how they shared it with someone else and they woke up. You know? And it's also interesting when they call you and they say, Man, I hate this stuff. Nobody gets it. Yeah, <laughs> you've been there too, probably, if you're already watching this one. There's an old saying that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. We've all heard that. What's really amazing is, with reference, for example, to this flat earth subject matter, is that you can show people the videos, you can show people the science and the proofs. Because let's be honest, if you use scientific evidence, and you employ the scientific method to refute a scientific claim, that is science at its best. That's not denial of science. That's not being anti-science. That is using science properly. And if it happens to fly in the face of what they claim in academia, that's too bad. The interesting thing is, though, it is harder to get people to look at it than to get the sense of it when they do look at it. You know, you can talk about how they're using weather modification to people and they go, wow, that's crazy. I've never heard of such a thing. And so then one day you're working with them and you look at the sky and say, do you notice it's perfect and blue? And then six hours later you can show them a sky socked in like a checkerboard with four jets actively aerosoling. And they'll look at it and go, oh uh, yeah, man, uh, you know, that's just air traffic. It's condensation, duh. It's like somehow you like they say you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink you can show them something but they're really not seeing it it's like they're blind they don't want to see it the contradictions that they would have to reconcile are just too much for them to even consider trying to do so they just act like they don't see it and I don't know if it's uh, an inability intellectually to do that or if it is just you know, maybe their heart condition is such that they don't care about the truth. I mean, they don't care about reality. It's really hard to say why people behave, behave that way, but it's so frustrating because you only tell them because you want them to know. You only tell them because they seem bright and like they're the kind of person that might appreciate it. And then they throw up this, bam, I don't want to hear it. It's like, it's hard to get your head around. So more and more, it's like, the only way to bring it up is to, effectively, is to ask them a question and see if they can make sense of it. And if they dismiss the question without trying to think it through and go, gee, I never thought of that. Let me think here. If this, then this, and if that, then the other. If they don't even try to reason their way through it, they don't care. They're not interested. They'd rather watch football and, and drink Budweiser and sit on their recliner and, and and just, you know, be one of the sheeple, I suppose. To overuse the term, <laughs> I hear it all the time, but it's pretty accurate. So, the point is that, you know, don't beat yourself up trying to lead people that don't want to drink. Because in reality, does it change your life in the sense that you... You don't have to pay your bills, or you don't have to go to work, or you don't have to get up in the morning. Or Does it change your routine? No, it doesn't. But what it does do is it changes your viewpoint. It changes your appreciation for the creation we live on. It actually augments any disdain you have for the establishment that rejects that reality and teaches one that you can clearly see has has ended up in the ruin of mankind. So, so let me summarize. It's harder to get people to listen than it is to get them to understand once they listen. So, if you like to share information, the key is learning to get people's interest so that they will listen. Then, you just lead them to all of the tools like my proponent's playlist, for example, on this channel. 
and it will teach them all they need to know. Comprehending's not the problem. The problem is a willingness to honestly examine the evidence. So if you're gonna work on your skills once you understand everything so that you can share it with others without getting beat up every time, master trying to get a conversation going that will open them up and get them to listen. That's the hard part. Understanding's not nearly as hard as is breaking the shell so that they will listen.